Hello there. In a previous video, we discussed how to find the arc length of curves that are defined in Cartesian form. So if we have some, if we have some function f is equal to f of x, and it's defined on some closed or open interval a, b, then we know that we can find the arc length of this curve here via the relationship l is equal to the integral from a to b of the square root, and let us assume we define y to be equal to f of x. This is going to be equal to 1 plus the square of the derivative of y with respect to x, dx. So in this video, we're going to discuss the parametric relationship or representation of the arc length formula. All right, so let's draw a similar picture to the one that I just had. So let's assume we have some curve uh, in space, right? Let's just, let's call this curve say C, and let's assume we have two points. And let's assume this curve is traced in this direction, and let's assume this curve C is traced by the equations x of t is equal to f of t, and let y of t be traced by the curve g of t. And let's assume this corresponds to t is equal to alpha, and let's assume this corresponds to t is equal to, say, beta. We're going to assume that this is a, say, function of x. Um, so let's assume that this corresponds to x is equal to a, and x is equal to b of the particular x-axis, and y-axis, where y is equal to, um, say, 5x. Right. So we already know how to find the arc length of this curve in Cartesian form. So the arc length is equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus d phi dx. Um, but phi is going to be equal to y, so I'm just going to rewrite that as dy over dx squared dx. Okay, cool. So uh, let's just uh, use this parametric representation for this curve. So if x of t is equal to f of t, that means x prime of t, or dx dt. I'll write that instead. So dx dt is going to be equal to f prime of t, and dy dt is going to be equal to g prime of t. Right? So when x is equal to a, we're going to assume that this corresponds to the parametric time t is equal to alpha, and when x is equal to b, let's assume that this corresponds to parametric time t is equal to beta. Right? So what else do we know? So, dx over dd is equal to that. So we can find that dx, which is this differential here, is going to be equal to f prime of t uh, dt. So that's going to be useful. Also, what is the representation for dy over dx? So dy over dx, we know, is the same as dy over dt divided by dx over dt. Right? And we already have expressions for both of those. So this is going to be equal to g prime of t over f prime of t, right? All right, so therefore, our arc length integral turns into the integral with respect to t from alpha to beta of the square root of 1 plus g prime of t f prime of t squared times dx, which is f prime of t dt, right? All right, so what do we have? So I'm going to pass this f prime of t under the square root. So this is going to give us length is equal to the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of f prime of t squared times 1 plus g prime of t squared over f prime of t squared dt, right? So length is equal to alpha over beta 
times the square root. And then I'll just FOIL that into that expression. And that's just going to give me f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared dt. And f prime of t and g prime of t are just another way of writing the following expression, namely the square root dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. And this is the arc length formula in parametric form. All right, great. So let's work through a couple examples to sort of illustrate how to use this particular relationship. So let's start with the classic one, uh, the circle. So a circle, as we know, can be characterized by the parametric equations r cosine t, r sine t, where t ranges from 0 to 2 pi. You can keep those open closed, it doesn't matter in this case. All right, so the arc length for our circle is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root. So dx dt is going to be equal to minus r sine of t squared plus dy dt is going to be r cosine of t squared dt, which is going to be equal to, so we have r squared times, then we have sine squared t plus cosine squared of t, which we know is going to be equal to 1, and the square root of r squared is going to be the absolute value of r, uh, and r is typically said to be a positive since it represents the radius of a circle. Um, so we're just going to rewrite that as just the integral from 0 to 2 pi of r dt, which we know is just 2 pi r, which is the circumference formula for a circle. So definitely this works out. And it's a little bit more cleaner than the Cartesian proof we did uh, for the circumference of circle before, which required a bit of trick substitute. All right, so let's work through a uh, second example. Now this shape is a little special and it's defined in a very special way. So I'm going to define a curve in this form. So I'm going to define x of t to be equal to the area from 0 to t of the curve cosine of pi omega squared over 2 d omega and y of t to be equal to the curve 0 to t of sine of pi omega squared over 2 d omega, right? And if you were to sketch the graph of this type of curve, you'll get a very interesting shape, actually. Namely, something that sort of looks like this. And let's assume that t is going to range from minus pi to pi. Minus pi is going to give us uh, this region, and pi is going to give us this region over here. All right, so let's find the arc length of this curve, which some people refer to as the Cornu spiral. All right, so the arc length is going to be equal to, so we need to find dx dt first. Let's just do that. All right, so dx dt is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to t of this integral defined function. So pi omega squared over 2 d omega, right? So we know from the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, since the upper limit is a single variable with no constant multiplied by it and the bottom is constant, then this precisely is just equal to the integrand evaluated at the variable of differentiation. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have that this is just going to be equal to cosine of pi t squared all over 2. So that's dx dt. And similarly, dy dt is going to be equal to the sine of pi t squared over 2. So that's nice. Great. So our arc length 
So we're going to have cosine squared pi t squared over 2 plus sine squared pi t squared over 2 dt. So regardless of the value of t, sine squared plus cosine squared, that value is going to be equal to 1 for all t in this interval. So this is just going to be equal to the integral from minus pi to pi of 1 dt, which is going to be upper limit minus lower limit, which is just equal to 2 pi. So that's just some examples on how to find the arc length of a function 